This is Hunt Nebraska, the official podcast for insight into Nebraska's hunting and shooting sports community. Be sure to give us a follow on Facebook, our space for sharing stories, information, tips, and techniques. Now, Hunt Nebraska. Welcome back, Outdoor Nation. We've got another Hunt Nebraska hangout. We're here at the uh, the cabin, the Hunt Nebraska cabin, and you can see we redecorated. We have got the big spring gobbler there strutting on the wall. We are all thinking about uh, spring turkey season. Yes, Actually, we we're thinking about you know surviving all the fun stuff we've done lately, which is quite a bit. We can get that uh, here in just a bit. But real quick, uh, introduction, the Jeff Rawlinson. He's with the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. We've got Kayla back pushing the buttons, making us sound good, all that type of stuff. She's producing uh, this podcast, Kayla's uh, with us as an outdoor educator. Uh, and then we got our good friend, Hunter Nikolai, uh, who's with, uh, well, kind of a shared position, National Wild Turkey Federation here in Nebraska, as well as Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. He's our R3 coordinator for hunting and shooting sports here in the great state of Nebraska. And just me, Hershey, also with the Nebraska Game and Parks. And appreciate you guys uh, bringing us into your home, into your car, your truck, your vehicle, your office, wherever you might be listening to us. Uh, we really do appreciate that. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so that uh, you know when our next uh, podcast drops because we want to keep these fresh. And we got a lot of things to say uh, and a lot of things to cover as we get into uh, start start of the spring season, right? We just got done with the archery tournament. Archer season, wonderful uh, thing. We're getting pumped up for some of the school day activities that uh, we coordinate here. The snows have left. For the most snow part. Snow geese. The snow geese have I was going to say, yesterday I saw some snowflakes. No, not that snow, but the snow geese have left. Uh, at least I'm not seeing any where I hunt. So I think that season for us has, has flown. Going to be a lot, uh, a lot of a lot of small groups of you yeah. know family flocks at yeah. best. Yeah. Or left behinds, that, that type of thing. But, but. We're in turkey season. We are in turkey season. We are in turkey season. It's uh, depending where you're listening at this and, and where you are uh, and what time of the week it is, it might feel like spring. It might feel like winter. It might, who knows what it feels like? I mean, we're on this roller coaster this year. I. It seems like every year we talk about it. Yeah, we're but, looking at 70s. We had a few days ago snow. I mean, it's... Uh, wind. Yeah, wind. Don't like the wind. I can deal with a lot of extremes, but the wind, that screws up hunting more than anything, yeah. it seems like, is the wind. Does. Not I agree. A fan. Not a fan. I agree. For bird dogs, it makes it tough to smell birds. Yep. yep. Uh, for waterfowl, you need a little bit, but not too much because yep. you need your movement in the decoys. Seven to ten miles an hour is pretty darn decent for waterfowl. Maybe, maybe twelve. After that, it starts to get a little, little, little much. Deer and turkey, I think, are in the same boat, and probably to me, spring turkey is the one I like the wind least. Yeah. I, I'll take rain. I'll take rain. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a little snow, but uh, wind. Once it gets start windy, it's just. The favors uh, definitely goes towards the birds. Agreed. Agreed. They can't hear you. You can't hear them. And it gets too windy, and they don't like that either. I mean, that just bothers them because they can't detect danger. They don't like all the branches and and whatnot moving around making noise, so that bothers them. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of the wind when it comes to turkey hunting. Well, they know where to go to get out of the wind. And in lots of spots here in Nebraska, it's not big spots. No. And they sneak in there. Uh, your only way is to get them to come out to the edges of that or come into a, a spot that uh, they want to be anyway, and you've got to be there first, which can be tough uh, to get there before they do. Plus, you just can't hear as well. And and they're making noise. It's not as much as they normally would, but it's just harder to hear, and that's what spring turkey to me is all about. Yeah, Right. I, I will say if you're, if you're out scouting for turkey and it's windy and you're not listening in the morning for gobbles but you're out looking for sign, I think it can be – Wind can be helpful because you're harder to detect. I was out a past couple weekends ago mm-hmm. here, and you know, God, we were uh, my wife and I were out walking around, like just looking for sign midday, and we it was windy out, and we actually walked up right on a turkey. It was so windy they couldn't hear us, so they were in a th- some point. thick cover. Yeah. So, so where was you know, that? you can use it to your <laughs> advantage. So, yeah, Hershey wants the GPS yeah. coordinates. We'll yeah, get just, that. We'll get that emailed over to you. Hershey. Just just drop <laughs> me the Onyx <laughs> marker. Yeah. Make sure it's got a turkey picture in it, though. Yeah. Uh, well, turkey season. I mean, like we said, we've been doing quite a bit getting folks ready uh, for this, and we're going to get into that right now. But this is what blows me away, Jeff. We did a survey back in 2020, I believe it yes, was, to see. Uh, we had a lot of new turkey hunters then yeah. uh, for obvious reasons. But we kind of asked them uh, lots of different questions. One is, how long have you thought about turkey hunting before you actually went? And the answer was 
Two and a half years. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, over two, over two and a half years or more. Mm-hmm. That just blows me away. I, I don't know if there's anything out there. Anything I dream of for more than two and a half years, I call that a bucket list. Okay, that that goes on the bucket list. But man, oh man, folks, don't dream about turkey hunting for two and a half years. Do it. Turkey hunt. I mean, these are the days to do it. Um, you know, we've our turkey population is such that, uh, yeah, get in now. I mean, get in and hunt now. Now's the time to, to be a turkey hunter And if you've never tried it. But, you know, waiting, uh, you know, n- nothing. You know, they say all good things come to those who wait. Not turkey hunters, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's get no better time than, than right now to make memories. And it's one of those things. I think a lot of the good things in life we, we kind of get nervous about and build up that anticipation. And then when we do it, we're thinking, boy, I wish I would have done that sooner so I'd have a few more extra years to do it and, yep. and learn and all that stuff. So no time like the present to help out. And, and Hunter, you've been a, a big part of this We've got online opportunities. We talked a little bit uh, about it here on the podcast at, at Hunt Nebraska. We've got some things on our, on our Facebook page as well. But we've got lots of things still coming up, some Facebook Live Q&A sessions, some calling clinics, all that uh, to help, keep, uh, well, get people ready if you're one of those that's been thinking about it for a year or two uh, or those that have done it a few times and want, you know, build more confidence on how can I be more successful. So, so what do we got so far? Yeah, we've got a, a whole – Hunt Nebraska spring turkey video series. Um, several have passed now. Uh, those videos are available on our Hunt Nebraska Facebook page. Um, we did a hunt planning and mapping for spring turkey hunting that's available, as well as a shotgun patterning and calling and decoys video. And then coming up on April 5th here, we at, at the Nebraska Outdoor Education Center here in Lincoln, we have a turkey calling workshop from 6.30 to 8.30, so that's also on our Facebook page. Get up. It's $10 to attend that. Um, bring your old family. Family, You can all get in for $10. We'll uh, be talking everything turkey calls, so from your, your box calls, your slate calls, probably get into some mouth calls too. So um, if you're novice or experienced, I think that's a good opportunity to get a little bit of more practice here before the shotgun season kicks off. And usually those those uh, calling clinics, Jeff, we invite people to bring their calls. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of folks do. They'll bring their calls, set them down. Okay, I've got this call. Uh, and this is that neutral zone, right? Don't worry about not being able to use it because they'll set it down. Yeah, I don't know how to use that call. When you're leaving that workshop, you will know how to use that call. And we'll have calls for those who, who don't know, who don't bring their calls. But I'd always recommend go out and get a call and then master that call. Yeah, and uh, this workshop, it was an eye-opener when we first started doing it because, you know, mouth calls, slate calls, box calls, people just, no one ever sat them down and showed them how to use it. They saw it on TV, and, boy, it just didn't work, especially when it comes to slates. And so we we go through that from kind of the novice start to finish. You know, it, when you were done, uh, you can call turkeys with your call. And uh, and I think that's the, the main thrust of that workshop is to make sure that when you leave, you're able to get out in the field and, and uh, call turkeys. Right, I mean... It's one thing to buy one, but, I mean, it takes practice, takes a little, a bit, little of bit of instruction, and to get the technique down right, different calls make different sounds and variations. So it's it, it really does, and there's there's two ways of looking at calls. One is figuring out what call to buy and learning how to use that call. And then two, learning how to adapt that call to the circumstances, make the types of calls you need to the circumstances at hand. And I, and I always kind of relate it to like a, you know, like a toddler, you know, toddlers learn to talk, but they just mumble stuff doesn't mean anything. It's just, you know, they just, but they're learning to use their, their, their voices. Right. And that's first step. We learned to make a yelp. Okay. But then we got to learn how to form sentences, you know? And so that's where the, that's where that come, that, that basic practice comes in. So we learn when to apply the right yelps and the series of yelps. Is it an excited yelp or is it a, a really toned down yelp? Is it too late for yelps? And now we're just going to do a little purr and there's it cluck, 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 you know. So the bottom line is that's the kind of stuff we cover in the workshop. And, folks, it's, it's, it, even if you've started calling, and, uh, but, you know, you feel like, yeah, I just don't feel like I really know what to say and when, this is a good workshop for that. You bet because – you practice, build confidence. Confidence is going to help you make the right calls yeah, and, and, exactly. and give a call. Some people just kind of stop. I don't want to mess yep. up. Yep. Uh, and, and a little noise can help. So question to all three of you right off the bat is if somebody comes up and says, I'm new to turkey hunting, I'm going to buy one call, what call are you going to suggest that they, they pick up? 
Now, after two or three years, you've got a whole truckload of, of calls, right? <laughs> uh, different colors, different sizes, shapes, different types, all that type of stuff. But one call, one call. And I know, I, you're, I know you already know the answer. In. I'm waiting to so, hear what you guys have to we'll say. We'll start with yeah. Kayla. What are you going to say? The slate call. Slate Ooh. call. Yep. I'm Nicely new to turkey done. hunting, and that's the one that's worked for me, been the easiest for me to kind of understand and grasp. I like it. I like it. All right, Hunter. I'd say a push button call just because of their ease of use. If you're you know brand new, you're going to get some consistent sounds at very minimal effort. Um, I'd say that's a good entry point right off the bat. See, I'm already going to have to take issue with that right there. The push button call, or what some people call the push pull button call, that's one of my secret weapons. Yeah, he doesn't. Want, I've heard him say I, that many times. It, that's, that's one he doesn't want anybody cause, using because that's the one that no turkey ever heard. It, everybody <laughs> looks at it and is like, "Oh, that's too easy. That's too easy. I'm not going to use that." Or I'm a big, I'm a big strong turkey hunter. That's for kids, and uh, they make some great noise. Yeah, and I've can. used those to call some very pressured birds, especially the purrs. They make wonderful purrs. So, gosh darn it, honey. All right, Jeff. I just won. Yeah. Well, those just who know one. me know I got opinions. Okay. Mm-hmm. And my opinion is the box call is the, the the call to start with, and you can use it all all season long, all years and years to come. Veteran turkey hunters are going to use box calls. Novices can easily. You can do that. That's that's. You can do that. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And so uh, I'm a big, big fan of the box call for the novice. Now, it's not the call that I would say I have to have. I, you know, if, I, if I leave it at home, I turn around and go back. Sure. Uh, it, it's not that for me. That would be the mouth call. But when it comes to you know having something, I, just about 99% of the time, I'm in my vest or my, my uh, pants pocket or whatever, I'm going to throw a, in the side pocket, I'm going to throw a box call in there. I absolutely adore the box call. Now, I think you're saying the box call partly because you get to carry it in that purple bag. <laughs> I do like these purple bags. These puppies here, uh, you can get these from a lot of places, but I'll tell you right now, uh, you need to have something to, to, to protect your, your, uh, your call. And these little purple bags just just work great. There's different; they come in different sizes, and, uh, <laughs> different flavors. And different flavors, <laughs> but they're absolutely. Uh, another thing is the you know rubber band over it. Those those big I didn't bring one, but those big heavy uh, rubber bands that go over the broccoli or the the, the vegetables in the store. Those big fat ones that look like the wristbands that you used to wear. You know, mm-hmm. uh, those weren't great for shutting up your box call, putting it around there, and then it just doesn't rattle as much because you know if you don't, then as you're walking, it's making that noise. Yeah. Now, now, I've had turkeys gobble at that noise, and I'm walking them, <laughs> trying to make that noise again. Shake yeah, again. Shake it again. But, uh, but yeah, you know, protect the call because uh, it's going to get wet. It's going to get stuff in it. And honestly, I'm a collector, I, and, I've, and I've really thinned out my box call. I've, I've given a lot of really? box calls away over to some of the people that I've been mentoring over the years. And so I've, I've probably given away a dozen box calls in the last four or five years, which maybe isn't a lot to some. It was for me. But because uh, I've had, I like to collect them, they're just things of beauty. They really are. They're things of beauty. They're just as gorgeous as can be. Uh, different <laughs> woods, different stains, different engraving. This one here was a gift from the National Wild Turkey Federation for a project that I worked on with them, and uh, and so owed to the NWTF folks. They know how to make a call. I'm gonna tell you right now. I like the sound of that call. But uh, uh, these things are just. They can be as elaborate, ornate, and beautiful as you want, and they can be pretty basic. So. Uh, this is we're going to talk a little bit about things we don't get to talk about in a lot of these uh, learn to hunt workshops, whether they're online Q and A's or uh, Facebook. Uh, so we're going to get into that. So you use that that purple bag. Uh, I had to get rid of the the glass that came with it. And, yeah, you know, it comes with stuff. some inert matter. You got to yeah. throw that away. But then the bag is pretty so, useful. So one thing we don't get to talk about very much is how you carry around your your calls. We see Jeff and his box call carry. You got something cool to put that push pull pin box in because they make noise. Those don't take much to bump. I've got, I mean, I actually just picked up a new turkey vest, but I typically uh, just keep it in a vest in a secured pouch. But um, millennials, yeah, so <laughs> gotta gotta have all the pockets to hold all your calls and all your gear. I was going to say, I've made use of some of the uh, the can koozies or the bottle koozies. Yep, I've got those to, to house, but the, the bottle ones are the best, right? Yeah, the water yep, bottle ones, yep, yep go right over top. Yep, and then they usually have a little hook on them, so you can hook them to your, your That's pack true. or whatever. I'm a big fan. I'm a, I carry a pack. It's one of those shoulder packs, and I'm going to be honest with you, that changed 
I started doing that about 10 years ago, and that really changed turkey hunting for me because now I've got beverages, I've got snacks, I've got <laughs> a dozen different calls to keep me busy. Uh, everything I might need is in that pack, and so uh, I throw that over my shoulder and head to the woods. How do you keep your slate call? You I got a vest a, too, don't you? I do, oh, but I, do. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little bag that I bring with me that, same as Jeff, I have snacks and all kinds of stuff in not a bad idea. I've got a, you know, I got two kids that help me carry stuff out to the the blind, and, and they both have vests and things like that. But it's always fun because you do make noise. Even the the slate call, you can't have that striker bumping up against yeah. the uh, the main body, of the pot, if you well, will. The, the vests nowadays, I mean, you've got a pocket specifically made for your slate calls, for your box calls, oh, for yeah, your you got strikers. A for your your, pockets, I mean, I mean they're, it's all separated. All. Keeps yeah. it in check for the most you, part, but, you know, you don't absolutely need that, obviously. You, you, you could use a, a little purple bag here like Jeff. And <laughs> Everybody needs that purple <laughs> bag. Like, I'm going to be honest. When I first started turkey hunting, the, one of the first pieces of equipment I bought was a turkey vest. Now, back then, they didn't have all these really fancy vests. It was a vest that had a little pad that you could pull out and then sit, you know, put it yeah. behind you. Yeah, I think it was like a half inch. Oh, if <laughs> that, if that. It was really more of a suggestion of a pad. <laughs> yeah. It said pad on it. It had to even write it on there so kept you could your, think it was a pad. Kept your it, butt dry yeah, if it was wet. It, it barely even kept your butt dry, but it sure didn't pad anything. But I'll be honest with you, those those first years for me were hunting up at the Niobrara, and we were, you know, kind of running and getting, gunning, so to speak. So um, those vests were handy. But my hunting's changed a lot over the years. And now mine is a park the truck, walk out to the <laughs> bottom of the creek or, you know, halfway across the section maybe at the most and sit down in a blind or the base of a tree. I don't need a vest for that anymore. And so I, and I, I'm walking a lot of times where I'm heading to a chair. Now, I was just going to say, <laughs> it definitely has changed because I remember – being able to finally put my mouth call into like a coin purse, those old rubber yep. coin purses that help keep them clean. You guys don't know the struggle it was to remember which pocket you put that, <laughs> that mouth call and then being able to spit out uh, the pocket lint uh, while you were making turkey calls. I mean, <laughs> that was part of the old school turkey hunting. Now, Jeff, you, you bring up chairs and blinds, and this is something we don't talk about a whole bunch in our in our um, uh, Learn to Hunt workshops. We do talk about blinds, but you... Yeah. You've taken that blind chair. In fact, the selection <laughs> process from last year, and back me up, Kayla. This has gotten pretty pathetic. I'm not going to lie to you. It <laughs> doesn't have to do with, uh, you know, is it mobile? Can I twist? Can I turn? Can I rotate? Yeah. It has one thing. Last year you said, I don't like that chair because it doesn't have blank. Do you remember what it was? A headrest. A pillow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so here's the deal. Over the years, uh, as, as we evolve, uh, over the years, you know, like I said, my turkey hunt went from, you know, living off the land for three or four days, living wild, to, to you know, like getting out of the truck and walking down. Because we got turkeys all over the place, right? We didn't have turkeys in uh, south of Lincoln like we uh, uh, do today. And so, you know, it was a big trip. Now, you know, we park on the places where we even go deer hunting, where bow hunting, and you walk past your bow hunting stands right up to the mm-hmm. turkey, you know, turkey woods and sit down and call. And, um, and so, yeah, I started using those tripod chairs and a blind. And, I th- and that, that, to me, was like, oh, my gosh, it'll never get any better than this. <laughs> then I realized those tripod chairs just aren't that comfortable. They're, they're better than sitting on the floor, but they're yep. not that comfortable. And so then I started using those little fold-up camp chairs that people sit around campfires and whatnot, you know, tailgate chairs. And I got thinking, you know, those are nice. This is not going to get any better. And then I got to realizing, you know, that's not the most comfortable chair. And so then I started finding these old, you know, couch chairs or whatever they call them, these uh, mushroom chairs that they're just, they open up and they just <laughs> sink inside. And Oh, my gosh. And and it's, and I tend to sit longer in those because, you know, you have to wake up to leave. And so <laughs> those chairs are pretty darn comfortable. And I've, I've, I've probably uh, <laughs> probably been in the woods longer and seen more turkeys in some of those chairs. But uh, And then you got me a Primos chair that sits on the ground. You sit down. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to be honest, Hershey, I've used that a couple times now. That's a comfortable chair, and it puts you right down onto the ground again. So I don't know. For 22 I may be evolving out of the ground blinds again and going back. It's everything's cyclic, right? You go back, but I may be going back to the less is more. Ooh, uh, uh, all right, we'll see. Well, talking about another topic here to do with spring turkey hunting, things we are not going to talk about in the Learn to Hunt workshops: food. Food is important when it comes to any type of hunting, but spring turkey hunting, especially because, like you said, the longer you can stay in the woods, the better. Yep. The days start early if, if you're going out and, and wanting to hear them from the roost. And the lengthening days, if you're going to go out for an evening hunt like you can here in the state of Nebraska, 
uh, that's pretty late. I mean, it's not going to – right now even the sun sets after 7.30. It's probably getting pretty close to 8, uh, which you can hunt to, to sunset. But also, you got a lot of hunters that like that 10 to 2, that right in the middle of the day. So you got to have food when you're going. So let's start with breakfast and snacks. What is the best breakfast and or snack for spring turkey hunting? Coffee. And, and coffee. <laughs> I don't know if it's a – I'm not a big breakfast eater. I usually don't start eating until like 9 or 10. So I, I start off the morning right away with a big – bigger than this mug of, mug of coffee and then don't start breaking into the stacks till well, maybe – so eight or nine, nine or ten. That's not too bad. I, I've got I got one of those uh, I think Stanley trigger cups or something like that, so I they splash around and it won't spill until I want it to and it stays nice and warm. Yeah, you got what's the, what's your first snack? If you're skipping breakfast, by the way, I've been told uh, by many a TV commercial that breakfast is the most important what they meal say. of the day, but you're you're skipping it completely. What's so what's the first thing you bite into then? Say either no, like a nice fruit, like a banana is good, or or a granola bar, good, and then wow. and then later in the day I'll break out some some jerky, venison jerky, beef jerky, whatever I got Healthy on hand. Stuff. Okay, all right, all right. Got to keep the protein. Got to keep the energy up, so you're not falling asleep too much. <laughs> Can you tell Jeff's not impressed? <laughs> He's I. <laughs> Can you tell? So we're, we're, apparently I'm not doing it right. Apparently I'm not doing right. I was gonna say yeah, we're gonna have to train you up for the Nebraska way to, to turkey hunt. So yeah. All right, Kayla, you go next. My go-to is cold oats along the lines of healthy <laughs> cold oats. So it's oatmeal that's cold. So you make it ahead of time. Boy, and, uh, oh, why? I can see an office intervention, <laughs> Jeff. I really can. We're going to need an office. Well, I didn't know anybody ate oatmeal yep. cold on purpose. Yep, I learned this in my college days when we were competing you, uh, you can make cold oats where it's kind of creamy and runny like oatmeal, but you can also make it with less milk and more peanut butter or more of a solid substrate you add in there, protein powder, whatever, and it'll actually hold its form, and you can make it in little balls or a bar so or whatever. I was going to say, what you're explaining to me is a granola bar. You know, I'm kind of <laughs> seeing it there. It's like, you know, years ago a company had the same idea and they put it in a package and it's just called a granola bar. You can do the same thing if but you they, want to. They had to dip them in chocolate so people would eat them. <laughs> yeah. I still do that. Wrap them in candy. <laughs> that's not done with yet. <laughs> uh, wow. Are you a dr- coffee drinker as well then? Not so much. I need a. I can't drink my coffee alone. I have to eat something yeah, with my I'm coffee. Okay. So I do bring a little thing of coffee, but... Not like Hunter, I don't go hardcore and bring the whole thermos out. Yeah, I might need a <laughs> refill here mid-podcast. So, <laughs> is it spoiled? Last time we were on air, you had spoiled not, milk. Not spoiled this time. So, I, I, I'm sensing a generational difference here, Jeff, because well, I'm, I'm not anywhere near this. The share, coffee, what, share what you do. I'm the gonna, coffee I'm goes. I want to hear this. I, well, usually on gonna, the way save out. This, save this I, podcast. I, you know, if it's chilly, this is something I learned deer hunting. I have the deer hunter's breakfast. You take the pop tart and you put it on the defrost, turn the defrost on and heat it up just a little bit. Now, spring turkey season calls for either something fruity like a raspberry or strawberry pop tart, where fall is more of like a s'mores pop tart. So you know what season it, it just gets you pumped up and gets you enough energy to to get to the to the blind. I do take coffee, like you mentioned. I also probably have a bottle of uh, soda someplace in there. And then we get into the magic donuts because we learned in, in my family a long time ago, good things happen with those little hostess donuts, usually chocolate dipped or fudge dipped, whatever they call them donuts. Oh my goodness. Uh, the bags keep getting smaller and smaller though. My daughter prefers the, uh, the uh, powdered ones, which is really tough. Cause if you're sitting in a blind, Jeff, you're probably wearing black and nothing shows white powder, yeah. powdered sugar, quite <laughs> like <Been there>. black, <laughs> black hoodie. Or something along those lines. Now, we do have jerky, and we might have some granola bars. Uh, we've got some of those breakfast things, but that's kind of as a, a backup. I have taken an apple or two, but uh, usually it's just a quick spin so the apple can see where we're turkey hunting, and then it goes back to the truck and then back in the bag at home. <laughs> yeah, um, that happens. <laughs> More often than well, not, Well, you're probably. scaring me for a second. <laughs> but yeah. uh, for some reason, it, it yeah, magic donuts have to be part of it, especially if you're on the blind. Now, if yeah. you're on the ground, then there's not a lot of time yeah. to eat. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's hear it from yours. You know, only because biscuits and gravy don't go out to the blind very easily. <laughs> only because you can't do that. But uh, 
you know, for me, it's it's uh, almond M and M's always with me. Uh, jerkies, various jerkies, goose sticks, deer sticks, jerky, jerky, whatever the case may be. Um, and uh, and then I will have some granola bars. That's you know, because there's been times where you're just you know it's a do or die kind of a situation, and you got to eat something. And so granola bars, they always find themselves at the bottom of the pack. And so like at the end of the season, I clean out all these granola bars and never <laughs> got touched. But um, but those kind of things. Uh, sometimes I'll even stop McDonald's and get a couple of biscuit sandwiches and stuff them in that pack. And then I get out to the field and just you know about seven thirty eight o'clock I start getting hungry and eat those. And then about eight o'clock a cigar. And then about nine nine thirty I start getting out bags of chips and that kind of stuff. You know pretzels and you know cheez its and that kind of stuff and oh yeah it's a process i mean it's yeah. it's a long per- term process i've learned one thing and that is this you got to have beverages with you and that's either going to be Gatorade for me water i i will take cans of pop but it's not my preferred here's why you just stuff your mouth full of food and all of a sudden and you're like crap and so you're getting your mouth call out and you got a mouthful of food right now if you add a foamy fizzy pop to that mouthful of food it's probably a good 15 minutes before you're going to call anything but if you can get some water or gatorade real quick and swash that down and get that mouth call in there you can you can respond pretty quickly so gatorade or water uh or coffee i will take coffee uh, in a big thermos coffee is one of those hard to swish around unless it's Cool lock. Right yeah, temperature. water's I yeah. usually bring water. Be cautious. Water too. Water's Be good cautious. to have. Yep, yep. But, but the, jer- the, the meats, the meats uh, are the big thing. The, the, I think that's what the, the jerky sticks, goose sticks keep you keep you going throughout yeah. the day. Venison jerky yeah, that does make a an appearance. Now that's reference. the good thing about cold oats. You can add chia don't, seeds in don't, there. Don't try that to gives you protein. No, you're just making it. The worse. oats themselves just, give you protein. You can't sell that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that goes good as hearty as cold oats. You know the, the, the interesting thing. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure turkeys will eat oats. So if you accidentally drop some on the way and you're baiting turkeys right there, they're don't not going to eat that. my magic donuts. <laughs> yeah, they're not yeah. going to do that. Hey, you yeah. never know. Yeah, you drop you a, a powder puff donut. It's there for yeah. the week. It's there for the week. <laughs> I, I will worry. say, though, uh, usually around Easter, we get a lot of jelly beans as well. So those make it out to the, yeah. the blind as well. Now, who ever thought of making – Jeff, you remember what flavor green jelly beans were? They're, they weren't our favorite, but you remember what flavor they were growing up? You know – Kind of a there's some that were apple sour and some that were just a sugary lime. Lime, kind lime. Of, yeah, yeah. most of it was lime. I didn't care for them, but I like them a lot better than the sour apple. Yeah. So I, if you you can tell my blind Kayla if I'm sitting out there because there'll be little green jelly beans being flicked out of the <laughs> out of the the blind. Now the good news is that uh, turkeys don't like them. Uh, voles, meadow voles, prairie voles won't eat those as well. Voles will eat part of your pop tart though. <laughs> We've had some of those in the blind Mice, and yeah, fed them, yeah. that type of stuff, so, which is kind of interesting. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you alluded to something else. You mentioned a cigar. Well, you know, cigars go, I was, I was going to throw our very own Julia Plugi here. She makes a mean, you know, a cinnamon, you know, uh, almonds, uh, uh, candy-coated almonds, and uh, those go down oh, good in the turkey go. blind, mm-hmm. just about as good as and anything. Just, oh, they're 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 he- they're they're heavenly. They're those. heavenly. Uh, yeah, I did mention a cigar. That's yeah. a great time because here's the deal: if turkeys, everybody knows I'm a cigar guy, and and it's very recreational, but uh, <laughs> not very consistently, but recreational. But I'll tell you right now, uh, you know, turkey hunting. God, if they could smell, you'd never you'd never kill one. So you know, they go a lot better with turkey hunting than they do with deer hunting. I can tell you that right oh. now. Uh, and I think one of the the things here, especially in Nebraska, especially as you get further east out into the hills into the the canyons that type of stuff staying in one spot can be a good thing yeah. staying out in the woods rather than going back to the truck going home whatever and just saying ah it didn't work out you just have a better chance of success because those turkeys might fire up at any time they're moving around some of the spots that i hunt you know the only patch of trees is where they roost and the rest of the day they're out in the open so you're not going to be sneaking in a whole bunch uh, on them they'll see you as you're, you're getting into the to the trees but so spending time and, and having patience is one of the biggest tips oh. that I can say. But you got to have something to do, yeah. right? Yeah. Cigar, a pipe. I know Jackson, who's not on the show today, uh, he kind of get into the, the pipe deal. That gives you something to do. It helps kill time. Well, so that's really the next is. question. What do you do to kill time when you're out there in the turkey woods yeah. when the turkeys aren't gobbling? Knowing that they're going to fire up middle of the morning, midday, yeah. something along yeah. those lines. 
and cigar can be a good one. Oh, it, it really is. In fact, I'll be honest with you. I'll look forward to that. Uh, you know, just sitting out there, relaxing the morning sun's coming up, the birds are chirping, you know, mid morning, it's just beautiful. Uh, it's a great time to sit and relax and enjoy one. Now that being said, you know, I gotta be honest with you. You know, we always said, you know, everybody's on the electronics too darn much. These darn things in the, in the turkey <laughs> blind, I mean, it's just like you can do all kinds of fun stuff in there. So if you've got to be kept busy, and I'm not one that does, I can easily just relax, enjoy the sounds, close my eyes, go to sleep, what have you. But if you've got to be kept busy, these darn, these darn things will do that. What game are you playing on that phone? You know, I'm usually not playing a game. I'm usually online look, reading stuff. I've got some history things that I read. Uh, okay. some history feeds. I'm a big history buff. And so, you know, the, the, uh, good. yeah, I'll use this and do some reading, uh, put my earbuds in and just have a, a book read to me while I'm sitting there in the, in the Turkey blind and that to me, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. There are a number of history books, I, which is mostly what I like to read, but number of books that I've downloaded and I look forward to going, I mean, I'm on Wednesday oh, going, go. I can't wait till Friday afternoon. I'm going to get to the <laughs> Turkey blind. I'm going to put my earbuds in. I'm going to listen to George Washington talk about the Delaware and, uh, and, 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 and so I look forward to that. I, I don't think it was a turkey uh, blind that uh, I learned about H.H. H. Holmes and the murder mansion there in, in Chicago during the, the World's Fair and all yeah, that type yeah. of stuff. That's that kind of jogged my memory there. That's that's pretty cool. Because it's your me time, right? I mean, when you get yes. out that blind, you can listen to a book, you can have a cigar, you can do whatever you want. And that's your me time. And that's yeah. kind of fun. Now, when you take other people out, I don't have a cigar when I have other people necessarily, uh, you know, when I'm mentoring or whatnot. But but when it's just me, then you can do it and kind of relax and enjoy the enjoy the afternoon. How about you, Kayla? What do you use as a time killer in the turkey woods? I usually bring a book, too. Um, however, I can't listen to a book because I get too in-depth with the book and forget about the turkeys. <laughs> and uh, I just get into the book and just listening to it, then... You know, there'd probably be a turkey in front of me, and I wouldn't know about it. So <laughs> It's got to be a pretty good book for me. I've tried to take books out there for reading, but I'm always worried about the white pages for one, so I'm kind of reading. And I've tried to get some things that uh, might help, you know, help expand my horizons type books, and it hasn't always worked. It's kind of like, all right, what's next? Read a page. All right, what's next? Uh, but that's a, that's a good one. Get a good book. Uh, I see you as a, you're in the book and you're here in gobbles and you're like, going almost done with chapter four, almost done with chapter four. Well, Hershey and I, we hear gobble, thank God, put that book down and get back to turkey hunting. So not a, when I, I have, like to read. When I have a hard book in front of me, it's easier to put it away. When I have it being read to me, that's when I get into the book and I'm just listening and I get into the rhythm of whoever's reading the book. Yeah, mm. I, yeah, that's I, interesting. I, yeah, I get that. I get See, that. See, and I, my hearing's to the point where I gotta keep them everything out of my ears, either that or I'm, I'm probably not gonna hear, hear a lot of stuff going on either. But all right, okay. So a book, the phone, and what about Hunter? I would say, you know, I like especially right away. You know, first couple hours, just taking in, you know, the morning. Everything's yes. waking yeah. up, coming alive. Um, but then I do, I peruse the phone, I'll listen, you know, in one, one earbud in, listen to a podcast or whatnot, you know, go on the phone a little bit. But really, my favorite part is probably taking a nap, you know, late mid-morning when things slow Amen. down a little bit, Amen. take a nap, sit Something back. Something said for the nap. You know, just... <laughs> Which hope, can, hope you don't miss anything. You know, some yeah. people will say that's defense. I say that can be offense because right. some of those snores can really just get gobblers yeah. fired up. I've had that happen many, many times. You know, sometimes all it takes is a little time, and that helps pass the time quicker than anything else I can think of. So. I'll say as season progresses, especially as you get to the end of April, beginning of May, that mid-morning, that 9 to 10 o'clock time is one of my favorite for those birds to have gotten the morning stuff done whether they needed to get something to eat, drink, or meet up, and then they start splitting up and those hens start disappearing uh, later on in the season to actually go nest or lay eggs. Um, so it is. It's one of those that, boy, that, that morning hunt right off the roost can be tough at any time. But then, to me, it's especially tough. And then you kind of, all right, that lasts – that lasts for a short time. And then, like you said, you got a couple hours to go. So I'll sneak into where I'm going to go, get the decoy set up and all that, and try to take a nap. Because to me, one of the things that, that happens, turkeys, yep, they're they're kind of spooky. And you can bump them out if, if they see you, obviously, and all that stuff. But if they gotta they got to make a living, and they're not going to abandon that spot completely. So uh, I have kind of have in my mind that if I bump turkeys out, even if I don't know that I bump them out, if I'm quiet for a while and let things settle down and then I start making some turkey noise, 
that they're going to have forgotten that I was there or, or all that, that person moving around, that type of stuff. So that's where I sneak in that nap later in the season. But like you said, you kind of camouflage in case they come strutting up to the decoy or, or just happen by uh, anyhow. But that is a, a neat technique. Last year, one of the time killers that my wife and I enjoyed um, on a trip is we came across uh, like a word find book. I'm not sure where we found it, if it was a gift from years ago or something, just like, let's try that. So we'd bring that out and we'd start doing these word searches. We'd have little competitions and all that type of stuff, kept us focused, kept us awake, kept us moving forward. But I got to thinking, boy, you know, there's people that do crossword puzzles in deer stands. Uh, They'll do all sorts of different types of games. Uh, The phone thing is is one thing that I try to avoid a little bit because I can just drive myself crazy with the little games, the word uh, games on there or uh, not having enough uh, uh, connection to download and Google things that, I, that I'm interested in. So it's one of those things that every once in a while you'll see my hand sticking out of my blind eye. I don't know <laughs> what two and a half foot does. But it does. <laughs> but it, it's, it does. works all in sudden, my mind. All of a sudden you get I, <laughs> so many times in the blind. All right, open up the roof. Stick it out there and bleep, 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 bleep. All my text messages are coming in. I read my text messages, put the phone down. If I need to get messages another hour later, bleep, 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 bleep. What is that different? You know, cloudy day, done. You know, can't do it. But uh, there are some blinds where I can't, some spots where I can't get a signal. And, Jeff, you probably recall this. Back in 2020 when the world went sideways and we were no longer in the office, we were in our, our two-week, uh, at least a part of our, our week stretches while we were gone, we were exploring the ideas of uh, online mentoring. Yeah. Remember that? Yes. Via yes. Zoom and, and yeah. Google Hangouts or whatever it was called back then. And we actually tried to conduct, and this one's going to be hard for you to believe, Hunter, conduct a team meeting while we were all out in the field and we were in different spots. I think we were spread out from, uh, you know, central Nebraska all the way to uh, to Southeast Nebraska and that type of stuff. Uh, I actually, uh, uh, one of us, uh, Christy, I think she wasn't hunting at all. She was just going to call turkeys there to to, to park. Yep. If I remember right. But that was really interesting. I will say because, not only were we able to get it to work that one time, and for some reason we couldn't replicate it, uh, <laughs> but uh, it also kept me in the game. My son and I went out to try it, and we were in a spot we didn't hear a turkey, we didn't see a turkey. It was a beautiful morning, but nothing was happening. But there were at some other spots. Christy had some early. You guys had some a little bit later. Yeah. There were gobbles going on. And it's one of those things that, it was really neat just being a, almost like we were part of that hunt. Just it like, all really right, was. what's going on? We haven't heard from them. You better ask what's going it, on. It really was because you know how when you're hunting with friends, and this, and this is one of my favorite deals when we're hunting with friends and there may be two or three of us at different blinds or different locations, and you almost can't wait till that 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock or whatever, 11 o'clock meeting that you're going to have so you can hear what they're seeing, what they saw. This was kind of unique because I wasn't with anybody but, but Julia, but I can tell you right now, here and in, you know, well, what are you seeing? Well, I got turkeys gobbling. Oh, really? Tell me about it. Where are they at? It was like you're living the hunt with them. It was Real cool. Time. It was really cool. Yeah, and um, uh, I could see value in that. I really could. I, I really enjoyed that. And and I've got a family now that all four of us turkey hunt, and we're all now of the age, basically, we can do it on our own, though usually we're, we're in pairs. Uh, but it is kind of fun texting back and forth and now snapping, like, you know, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? What's going on? Yep. And it just feels like yeah, nothing's happening here, but you can still be part of it. Yeah, and we were different, you know, towns, different oh, locations different across counties. the state. Yeah, different yeah. locations. So it was just kind of fun to see, you know, things are really work, waking up in Oto County, but down here in, you know, southern Lancaster, you know, things are things are still quiet. Yeah, and uh, – uh, you, you know, and, and then Christie's, I think we could hear the gobblers. Yeah, we could. You could they hear them. Good. Barely, but you could hear them gobbling. Yep. She's, oh, there's gobbling up a storm. Oh, it felt good to hear gobbles. I like hearing gobbles. And that's one thing I, we don't talk about in these learn to hunts is get a buddy. Get a buddy or two. Uh, make a buddy or two that can go spring turkey hunting. They don't have to sit with you. They can be someplace else. It's amazing how close you can be to a really good hunt and not know it. I go back uh, a time, and Jeff, you've heard this story before. We were on a ridge, my friend and his son, and then me and a, another friend, in a, we were in two different blinds, uh, sitting on the edge of a pasture uh, that was bordering a, a public hunting area. And we had two completely different hunts. Uh, and there was less than 100 yards apart between the two of us. There's a nice deep valley between the two of us, and that's kind of why we'd set up the way we did. But me and my friend, just like, this is... 
nothing. We heard some distant gobbles. That was it. Oh, my goodness, there's no birds here. And they finally popped out way in some different spot out in the pasture and uh, never got close to us, though we could watch them, which was kind of cool. But nothing. And I got a text message from my friend. All right, I know we're meeting at this time. Should we bring the blind out? And I'm thinking, well, heck, yeah, there's no turkeys here at all. Got back to the truck. And, and Kaylee, they told me about a story. They had turkeys gobbling all morning. They had them spitting and drumming behind the blind. They just couldn't get, couldn't get turned around to shoot them. They had them within 10 feet several times. They're just like, man, that was the best hunt we've had this year. We're not less than, we're 80 yards away. We didn't hear those birds. We didn't see that happen. Yeah. So it, it gives, it gave us hope and we got a bird out of there the next day. But without that hunt, we would have walked away and said, there's nothing there. So just that teamwork, that team effort is kind of neat. So, all right, we're going to have to wrap this up. One last thing, one last piece of advice from each of you as far as things we don't cover in the Learn to Hunt workshop that adds to your turkey hunt right here, that tip, whether it's comfort, whether it's, hey, this is what you need to try, it's the tip, uh, you know, the trick up the sleeve, that type of thing. What would it be, Jeff? You know, you hit the nail on the head earlier. Man, I can say that one of the things that drives me go out more than, you know, you might hunt. 10 times a season by yourself, but with others, you're hunting 20, 30 times a season, you know, find that person, that, that, that son or daughter, that relative, the friends or family or whatever it is, and, and get them out in that blind with you. Because I can tell you the hunts that I've had friends or family with me, which is most of them these days, uh, were the funnest, most fun hunts of my life. I mean, nothing compares. We're laughing, we're giggling. You know, I, I still remember some hunts you and I had, had Hershey where we're just laughing so hard. We weren't turkey hunting. We were, I mean, we said we were, but <laughs> we weren't turkey hunting. But damn, it was fun. And I think that's what we're looking for when it comes to hunting. You know, yeah, there's that adventure, but that sense of fun and camaraderie with people in the turkey yeah. blind, it's magnified by a thousand. So I, I'd say... You know, share that with somebody and, uh, and and make a new friend for life, make a hunting buddy. But uh, you'll look forward to going back to that turkey blind every weekend uh, for the laughter, the memories. Wow, that's pretty good. Either two, you top that. I I would just say, you know, be comfortable. You know, the longer you're out in the woods, the the more likelihood you're going to have success at harvesting a turkey. So if, whether that's from how you dress to you know, the chair you're sitting in, like we talked about earlier, as we get into the spring here more, you know, thermocell, as it gets oh, more yep. buggy, Ooh, um, good one. you know, yes. you know, I mean, pay attention to the weather, be comfortable because the longer, the more comfortable you are. And that, that goes for, if you're taking out your kid, your husband, your wife, your friend, especially if it's, you know, one of their first times and they haven't done it before, you know, if they're comfortable, you're comfortable, you're going to have a good time and spend, spend more time in the woods. All right, Kayla. Mine would be to get out and just start hunting. Take all the tips you can, all the advice you can. Like Jeff said, our average hunter waits two, two plus years to get out. And just imagine if you're just out in the woods observing turkeys or out in the woods just making random noises trying to figure out what to do. You're already two years ahead of where you would have been other than just thinking about it if you're actually out there. So that would be my advice. Just get out there. You don't have to bring a shotgun with you. You don't have to bring a bow. Just go sit, just go. try and figure stuff out. Um, then you at least have a little bit of a head. Yep. It may be uncomfortable, but it's, yep. it's yep. Figure, that's how you're going to learn. That's how you learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and most importantly, ditch those cold oats. I don't think anybody <laughs> needs to hear that ever again. That's, so, get rid of the cold so oats. So I've got two I can't. things. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> You're going to have to bring some of it in so we, so we understand yep. it better. Uh, one, <laughs> I, <get it. laughs> I, I challenge everybody, regardless of how many years you've been turkey hunting, go at least one day this year when you don't want to. I'm not saying going out in a thunderstorm, lightning strikes, all that type of stuff. Go out. Sometimes those are the best hunts, not only for the stories that you talked about, mm-hmm, Jeff, mm-hmm. but a lot of others are going to go back to bed, and all of a sudden those birds, hey, they're going to do their bird thing. They're not going to stop doing that. So go out at least one when you don't want to. And and the best advice I can give anybody, new, old, experienced, veteran, uh, two years under the belt, zero years under the belt, is simply magic donuts. <laughs> All right. And we're going to leave it right there. So, uh, again, thanks for li- tuning in. Make sure you give us a like and subscribe. Until next time, Hunt Nebraska, brought to you by your Nebraska Game and Parks Commission.